So students in our transnational development clinic represented Mr. Mars, uh, who was seeking assistance under a program known as Trade Adjustment Assistance, which is a federal program that is available to U.S. workers who lose their jobs because of changes in U.S. trade policy. So that could be either because of outsourcing or because of increases in import competition. Um, Mr. Mars was one of 265 workers at a gun manufacturing plant in North Haven, just a short distance from the law school, uh, called Marlin Firearms. And Marlin had been in business in the New Haven area for about 150 years. It was a longstanding uh, employer, uh, really a staple of the community for generation upon generation. And they shut their doors in uh, April of 2010. Now, Mr. Mars um, had, um, as part of a, a group, the state of Connecticut on his behalf and the behalf of all the other workers at the factory had applied for this uh, program through the federal government and had been denied. Um, we then uh, began representing Mr. Mars in a case that we took to the U.S. Court of International Trade, which hears appeals of denials uh, under this program, and um, ultimately the Department of Labor, which administers this program. Um, I took a voluntary remand on the case, decided to investigate further, and ultimately decided to grant uh, benefits under the TAA program to all 265 workers. The TAA program is uh, relatively unknown, but a really significant program for vulnerable workers in the U.S. economy, and in many ways becomes all the more important at a time uh, like this when we're in such a deep economic crisis. The program uh, provides a package of assistance, the most significant of which is meaningful job training programs. Um, it's really designed to provide assistance to workers so that when they lose their job because of changes in U.S. trade policy, they get um, the opportunity to train for a new job in the economy. Um, along with that job training, they get an extension of unemployment benefits that could be for up to uh, an additional 57 weeks. They get um, uh, a health care tax credit um, for um, up to 65% of the cost of COBRA uh, for themselves and their families, which is in and of itself a, an enormous uh, benefit for workers who've lost their jobs. In Connecticut, um, the typical unemployed worker pays about 83% of their unemployment insurance just toward health insurance. Um, so. There are these benefits and a series of others. In total, for the 265 workers, if all of them were to take maximum advantage of the full uh, packet of package of assistance, it's probably in the range of eight to $10 million worth of assistance. So the Transnational Development Clinic, uh, we started last year. And we started it with the idea that we should uh, seek to identify places for productive intervention by U.S.-based lawyers uh, on a range of global poverty and international development issues. So we took on a range of projects that spanned uh, things going on in India to um, uh, the issue of remittances by immigrant workers here to places in Latin America and other parts of the world to um, what the impact of global trade is on U.S. workers uh, um, here in our own community in and around New Haven. And so the Trade Adjustment Assistance Project was one of several uh, that fit into a broader complement of projects uh, regarding um, uh, global trade, global poverty, um, and transnationalism as a, as a dimension of lawyering. Um, we took on this case, uh, really it was referred to us from the State Department of Labor, so that we had, uh, as we had identified this as one of several programs that it would be worth trying to investigate and to provide representation to workers for, we were in touch with the state and let them know that um, should they have cases of people who had been denied benefits, um, we would be available to screen them and in an appropriate case represent the clients in litigation to the Court of International Trade. Uh, so that's how we took it on and in many ways the, um, the case provides a portal into, uh, a very localized portal into a global phenomenon of displacement of workers that's caused by macroeconomic shifts in trade policy. So we tend to think mostly about the ways in which um, trade um, increases um, the ability of the United States, for example, as an exporter to produce more. Um, and while economists disagree about what the net benefit or losses of uh, trade policy is, the political consensus is, as reflected by the, the passage of free trade agreements, that, um, that free trade agreements are a net good. 
Um, but even those um, who believe that free trade agreements should be passed, almost all of them recognize that it creates internal displacement um, with regard to U.S. workers. And particularly in the manufacturing industry, we've seen over a period of decades that as uh, jobs have, uh, as free trade agreements have permitted um, jobs to go abroad um, because uh, we're able to import things made abroad more cheaply, uh, manufacturing jobs in the U.S. have declined precipitously. And um, this, uh, the Trade Adjustment uh, Assistance Program was really designed to cushion that blow of free trade agreements. Um, in fact, the Trade Adjustment Assistance Program typically has, has gone hand in hand with the enactment of free trade agreements. So even just a couple of weeks ago when the U.S. Uh, <clears throat> approved new free trade agreements with uh, Colombia, uh, South Korea, and um, Panama, that was preceded just uh, by a couple of weeks by reauthorization of the TAA program. And that's a political recognition of the fact that um, there's a real need to protect U.S. workers um, at moments when we expand uh, free trade agreements.